The series opens with police and paramedics rushing to the scene of a tragic accident. Riley Flynn, the driver at fault, was under the influence when he crashed into another vehicle. The other driver, a young woman, sadly does not survive the collision. As a result of his actions, Riley is sentenced to four years in prison and ordered to pay $104,900.11 in restitution to the victim's family. During his time behind bars, he begins to experience haunting visions of the girl. The scene shifts four years later to Crockett Island, where Riley's mother, Annie, anxiously awaits his return. The island has a tiny population of 127 residents. Reaching the island takes careful planning since only two ferries, the Breeze and the Bell, are currently operating. Annie is on the phone with Riley when her husband, Ed, and her younger son, Warren, step out of the house. Warren heads down to the docks with his friends, Ollie and Duker. At the docks, they meet a guy named Bull to obtain some drugs. They then climb into a patched up canoe and row over to an abandoned island off the mainland. When they reach upwards, they find it deserted and overrun with stray cats. As the boys explore, they talk about how the former residents used to bury their dead in their yards. While they chat, Warren spots a human-like creature lurking in the bushes. But when he shines his flashlight on it, the figure vanishes into the shadows. The next morning, Riley finally returns home, and Annie greets him warmly. When Riley steps off the boat, Beverly Keene, a member of the church, asks Sturge, the local handyman, about Monsignor Prude, the island's 80-year-old priest, currently on a pilgrimage trip. She is surprised not to see him on the breeze, as she had been told he would be arriving. As Riley and Annie walk through town, people seem to feel uneasy around him. On their way home, they encounter Sheriff Hassan, who watches Riley with a wary eye as he passes by. During their walk, Annie reflects on how the island used to have hundreds of residents, but now families are leaving without even trying to sell their homes. Fishing has also become harder due to strict limits imposed after an oil spill three years ago. Later, townspeople gather at the school for a meeting about the weather forecast and how to prepare for it. At the Flynn family dining table, Warren and Riley talk about recent events on the island. During their conversation, Riley learns about Aaron Green, his childhood crush, who is now a teacher at the local school. Annie mentions that Aaron has been back for a few months and tells Riley he will see her at church tomorrow. However, Riley responds that he has no intention of going to church. Riley and Warren joke about the priest and Riley's reluctance to attend, makes their father lose his patience, and insists that Riley must go to church as part of his parole conditions. Later, after dinner, Riley looks out the window and notices Warren sneaking out of the house. Assuming it is just typical teenage behavior, he waves him off and heads to bed. Meanwhile, Riley is still haunted by visions of the girl he killed. At the same time, Beverly sees smoke rising from the rectory's chimney and walks in, expecting to find Monsignor Prout there. Instead of meeting Monsignor Prout, Beverly encounters Father Paul Hill. Earlier that night, Father Paul is seen dragging a large chest into the rectory. When he knocks on it, something inside responds with two knocks. The following day, Warren and Uker are in the church, serving as altar boys. As they sing a hymn, the townspeople are surprised to see a new priest in their midst. After the hymn, Father Paul informs the congregation that he has been sent by the diocese to temporarily replace Monsignor Prude, who fell ill during his trip and is now recovering in a hospital on the mainland. He reassures everyone that there is nothing to worry about. After the service, some residents approach Father Paul to greet him. He quickly senses that Riley is not fully committed to his faith. He says that he can work with that, hinting at a willingness to connect with him. Riley runs into Aaron and they catch up as they walk home together. Karen shares that she has been in New York and traveling around the country. Riley discloses that he spent time in Chicago, where he was doing well, but his habits led him to lose everything. As they walk, they laugh and acknowledge that although they said they would never return, here they are back on Crockett Island. Karen reveals that she was married, but it did not work out. Riley responds that he is not married. He also mentions that he came out of prison as an atheist. Aaron then shares that having her baby saved her life, giving her a new perspective. As Riley drops Aaron off, she asks him how he is feeling. Riley confesses that he feels aimless, caught in the flow of time without knowing what to do next. Aaron suggests he ride out the storm expected to hit the community and wait to see what tomorrow brings. She apologizes for everything that has happened and then heads home. Later, Bev Keen confronts the priest about wearing a gold chasuble instead of the green one typically worn during ordinary time in the Catholic calendar. He explains that he could not find the green one and avoids the topic. The storm hits the community hard, and as Riley looks out the window, he spots a figure in a long coat and hat running along the beach. He tells his family about it, but they cannot see anything. 
Convinced it is Monsignor Prude, Riley rushes out to chase the figure down the beach. Just as lightning flashes overhead, the figure seems to disappear. The next morning, Riley and his family step outside to find seagulls swarming the beach. When they investigate, they discover that stray cats from Uppards have washed up on the shore. Soon, a crowd gathers at the shore, including the Flynn family, the sheriff, Beverly, and Wade, the mayor. The sheriff urges the locals to stay away, fearing a potential spread of disease. He proposes burying all the cats, but Wade reflects on worse events the island has faced, pointing out that there was no flooding in Uppards. The sheriff then notes the cat's broken necks and wounds, with no blood present on the animals or the shore, suggesting that something sinister occurred in the water or in Uppards itself. As they converse, Wade urges the sheriff and his son to attend mass, hoping it will help the community embrace the two Muslims. Ed shares as they approach him that Riley spotted someone resembling Monsignor Prout during the storm, but Riley hesitates to confirm it. Later, Riley warns Aaron to stay away from the shore because of potentially harmful chemicals from the cats, but Aaron asserts her independence and walks off. Before Aaron leaves, he mentions seeing someone in the storm, hinting at Monsignor Prout, but quickly brushes off the topic. Next, Father Paul arrives for Mass wearing his green robe, but only a few people attend communion. After the service, he chats with Lisa, the mayor's daughter as he walks her home. On their way, they encounter Joe, the town drunk, and his dog, Pike. When Father Paul greets Joe, the man feels uncomfortable and quickly leaves, while Lisa stands frozen. Father Paul asks her about her reaction, but she assures him everything is fine. At the school, Aaron discovers Beverly in a supply closet, where she is taking out a bottle of rat poison. Aaron is there to grab some cleaning spray when Beverly criticizes her for wasting supplies. Unlike her mother, curious, Aaron asks Beverly about taking the poison. Beverly explains that after the oil spill, the island experienced a rat infestation, and the poison worked like magic to eliminate the rats. She adds that if any predators have killed the kittens, she will sprinkle the poison around her house for protection. Later, Father Paul arrives at Sarah's house, the local doctor, to offer a private mass for Mildred, Sarah's mother. After letting him inside, Sarah watches as Paul gently attends to Mildred, offering her wine and a communion wafer. In the evening, Riley walks past Aaron's house without acknowledging her, prompting Aaron to stop him for a casual chat. That night, Riley experiences the same vision of the dead woman with him alone in a boat on the open sea, but this time he also visions the figure he saw in the storm. Meanwhile, something flies through the sky and lands in an abandoned house on the island. The next morning is Easter, and the church is quite full. Inside, Father Paul delivers a sermon, expressing his belief that the island will rise again, and encouraging everyone to keep attending church. He reminds the congregation that Jesus' first disciples were fishermen, and emphasizes the importance of singing even in times of darkness and despair, as reflected in the Psalms. After the sermon, Father Paul marks each person's forehead with a cross made of ashes. Riley also agrees to receive the ash cross on his forehead from Father Paul. Afterward, the island hosts its annual crockpot luck festival, filled with food, games, and music. Sarah talks to a woman who asks why she chooses to stay on the island. Sarah replies that she cannot leave because it is where her mother wants to be. The two women notice Father Paul observing them, and Sarah remarks that he watches her in the same way the Monsignor used to when she was a child. After that, Father Paul approaches Riley. They have a brief, casual chat about the festival, during which Father Paul proposes starting an AA chapter at the rec center. This would provide a supportive space for those struggling with alcohol addiction to share their experiences and work towards sobriety. This way, Riley will also not have to travel to the mainland for meetings. He also notes that it could be beneficial for the community, especially since Joe was involved in a hunting accident that accidentally left Lisa paralyzed. Just then, Aaron arrives, prompting Father Paul to step away and leave Riley with her. Aaron shares her feelings of loneliness and how she relates to her mother's struggles. Riley reassures her that she is stronger than her mother and will excel in whatever she pursues. Suddenly, they hear Joe crying out for his dog. When they rush over, they discover that the dog has been poisoned. He expresses his sadness, saying he cannot comprehend why anyone would harm his innocent pet, and he starts to mourn for his pet. The next day at school, the sheriff finds Beverly in the supply closet. He tells her he is investigating a mystery on the island, and mentions that Pike was poisoned. He asks her about the poison, and Beverly admits she put out some rat poison. She worries that if the dog accidentally ate any, she could never forgive herself. Beverly then adds that the stack of poison in the closet is meant for the entire island, and wonders no one would notice if someone took some. She concludes that she really should keep the rat poison locked up. The sheriff visits Joe, 
who insists he believes Beverly poisoned his dog but is aware no one will take him seriously, so he asks the sheriff to drop the issue. To Joe's surprise, the sheriff agrees that Joe might be right regarding Beverly. At the rec hall, Father Paul and Riley are having an AA meeting. Riley shares his concerns about the hall, revealing that Bev convinced everyone on the island to take settlement payments after the oil spill and suggested donating some to the church. He suspects she pocketed part of the money and only built the rec hall to hide her actions. Riley, who asserts he has been sober for four years during his time in jail, shares his frustration, saying that God allowed the accident to occur and does not intervene. He finds the idea that suffering can be a gift from God to be monstrous. Conversely, Aaron is at home when she hears a noise on the roof. Curious, she checks the window and sees someone running away. Later, she notices blood on her clothing and decides to visit Sarah to make sure everything is okay with her and the baby. After confirming that they are fine, she heads back home. Just as she leaves, Sarah suddenly hears her mother screaming, claiming that her husband, who died 15 years ago, is outside the window. At the same time, Bull walks past an abandoned house and hears a sound. As he approaches the door, he hears an echo of his own voice. Suddenly, something grabs him and pulls him inside the house. The following day at church, after the prayers, Father Paul begins to distribute the communion wafers. When he reaches Lisa, he steps back and gestures for her to come forward. To everyone's surprise, she stands up and successfully walks toward Father Paul. After Lisa walks up, Father Paul starts coughing and stumbles toward his house, clutching his stomach. Concerned, Beverly follows him inside, where she witnesses him cough and spit blood into the bathroom sink. With the news of the miracle spreading, townspeople gather at Father Paul's home, asking him to heal their conditions. However, Beverly steps in to clarify that it does not work that way and encourages them to pray. In the next scene, Father Paul sits alone in an empty confessional, ready to share a significant confession. He asks the Lord to bless him, revealing his intention to lie to the parishioners about Monsignor Prout. Then, an elderly man, confused, embarks on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. He strays from his tourist group and finds himself wandering through the desert. Meanwhile, Sarah examines Lisa, confused by her ability to walk. After examining her, she recommends that Lisa use a cane for the time being since her muscles are still weak. Sarah encourages her parents to take her to the mainland for further tests, but they reluctantly admit they cannot afford it. After they leave, Sarah finds her mother upstairs in front of her bedroom. Riley attends another AA meeting with Father Paul, and they discuss Lisa. Riley expresses that while he can understand a misdiagnosis, he questions how Paul knew Lisa could walk. Paul admits he does not have an explanation that would satisfy Riley, and explains that he just sensed it, and felt it to be true. The people on the island are healing from their ailments. Ed no longer feels his back pain, Annie discards her glasses, Lisa walks unaided, and Mildred manages to climb the stairs. The community is coming together, and more individuals are attending church for communion. One night, Lisa sneaks out to meet Warren, and they take a rowboat together, sharing a kiss. Riley visits Aaron and they spend time talking, rebuilding their connection. At the church, Father Paul delivers a sermon about rebirth, second chances, and eternal life. Despite his message, he appears unwell, sweating and wiping his face as he explains that while mysteries abound, true miracles are rare. Suddenly, he collapses. The scene shifts back to Father Paul in the confessional. He recounts how Monsignor Prout wandered deep into the desert and was caught in a fierce sandstorm. In his desperation, he found shelter in a cave-like ancient ruin he stumbled upon. In the present, Sarah examines Father Paul and determines that his body is fighting a virus and that he is dehydrated. She advises him to rest and allow his body to expel the illness. Simultaneously, Joe relaxes in his trailer when someone knocks on the door. When he opens it, he is shocked to find Lisa standing there. She greets him calmly and steps inside, glancing around his messy home. Spotting a rifle on the wall, she asks if it's the one that hurt her. Joe denies it, explaining that he threw that gun into the bay because he could not bear to look at it after the incident. Lisa then recounts the day Joe shot her. She shares that she was walking with her dad and did not even feel the gunshot. After years of hating him and wishing for his suffering, she tells him that she forgives him. She offers him some wisdom, saying that the only thing standing in the way of a better life for him is himself, and for her, it was hate. With that, she leaves Joe's trailer. After discovering a Bible in Ollie's backpack, the sheriff calls a meeting at the school. The meeting is attended by the townspeople along with Beverly. It turns out Beverly has been giving Bibles to the students, which upsets the sheriff. As Beverly climbs onto her religious pedestal, sheriff reassures her that his son knows about the Bible. In fact, Muslims respect Jesus, but believe that Christianity has strayed from its original teachings. 
Beverly claims that this is not the right place to discuss religious differences. Sheriff says that it is what he wanted to tell, emphasizing that school is not the venue for religion and that Bibles should not be distributed to students. He points out that if he handed out copies of the Quran, she would be furious and likely try to run him out of town. Beverly insists that she would never drive him away and claims she is simply sharing her faith, especially since genuine miracles are happening on the island. At the hall, Joe attends the AA meeting and speaks freely. His mood is much lighter than before, thanks to Lisa's forgiveness, which has brought another miracle to the island. Once the two men leave, Father Paul collapses to his knees, retching. As Joe and Riley exit the hall, they chat about Beverly. Joe accuses her of money laundering. He reflects on living on the island while everyone essentially hated him because of Lisa, but he could not just leave the place. He shares that his sister was the only one who cared for him, but she passed away a few weeks ago on the mainland. He regrets not visiting her. Before they go their separate ways, Joe asks Riley if things will change for people like them. Riley, equally unsure, replies that if they work hard, they might start to feel differently. That night, Ali tells his father he wants to attend mass at the church. The sheriff refuses, and Ali argues that he was never consulted about becoming Muslim or moving to the island. He believes Lisa's recovery is a miracle and wants to understand it better. The sheriff explains that Ali's mother was Muslim and held on to her faith while battling pancreatic cancer. He expresses his belief that if God performs miracles, it should not be selective. He then suggests they can discuss it more tomorrow. As he turns off the light, he notices something outside the window and feels a jolt of fear, but it quickly vanishes. Meanwhile, Beverly is busy in Paul's house, discussing a community dinner for him with the family. Suddenly, Paul rushes through the door and collapses to the ground. He starts coughing up blood, his eyes wide and bloodshot. In the confessional, Monsignor Prout seeks refuge in a dark cave. Lighting a match, he spots glowing eyes in the dark shade. Suddenly he is attacked by a gigantic human-like figure with wings that bites him. Father Paul remembers the pain fading into peace and is convinced that the figure is an angel. The angel then cuts his own forearm and feeds Monsignor Prout his blood. When Monsignor Prout awakens in the daylight, he discovers that he has returned to his youth. Turning around, he sees the angel lingering in the shadows, avoiding the light. Father Paul decides to bring the angel to the island to help those in need. In the present, Father Paul suddenly comes back to life, startling everyone. Beverly, tears streaming down her face, calls it a miracle, while Wade and his wife stare in disbelief. The scene shifts to a newspaper clipping on the wall, detailing the church's renovation and featuring a photo of the young Monsignor Prude, now known as Father Paul. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1,000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.